This month we're visiting the northwest of Tasmania and dropping in on the Sprayton Cider Company. The cidery is only a 10 minute drive from Devonport and is an excellent spot to have a taste of some delicious Tasmanian cider. You can also stretch your legs with a walk through the newly planted working orchard and if you're lucky, you might even get to view Sprayton Cider being bottled. The cidery is open every day from lunchtime until 5pm. Here we are today at Sprayton Cider. I'm here with Damien. Thank you for having me today. Um, Sprayton Cider are a relatively new cider uh, company in Tasmania. Yep. How did it come about? Yep. Um, great question. Uh, although the cider part of our company is, is really new, um, we've only been doing it for just over a year now, uh, the parent company of, of Sprayton Cider Cover Sprayton Fresh, and that started 15 years ago when we started making a premium apple juice, and the families involved with Sprayton Fresh have been growing apples in this area and living in this area for over 100 years. So yeah. even though the cider aspect is quite new, the apple background goes all the way back. And the idea of making cider came about because we already had the juice. Um, so the next step of making cider and adding yeast to the juice was really a logical value add to, to what already was a, a premium product. So I know that you produce five different ciders. Yep. Uh, can you talk? to us about the difference in each of the varieties. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the way that we, we make our cider is, is pretty similar across the board and the way that we've changed our varieties uh, per se is to be really specific with the variety of apple that goes into making that blend. Um, so I guess we'll start from, from this side here. And the, the first product is our classic, which is made from Pink Lady and Sundowner apples. And within our range, it's sort of a really good entry product because it sits in the middle in terms of um, the dryness to sweetness. Okay. Um, even though all of our products tend to be at the drier end, that's sort of, this is just a good, um, I guess, entry into the style of soda that we're making. Um, the next one is the Bright, which from the classic, if I use that as a navigation point, it's just a little bit sweeter, because it, it's made from uh, Gold Delicious, John Gold, and Jonathan Apples. Um, the next one is our Perry, which is a, a pear cider. Um, we've quite deliberately named it a peri because we're trying to make a, a more authentic um, peri rather than a pear cider. Mm -hmm. The pears used are very lost in packing pears and it's a little bit sweeter than the classic and the pear flavour is only quite subtle because the pear flavour in the pears is only quite subtle. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one along is it, I guess our um, little bit left field one, um, the advantage of being a smaller producer allows you to have a little bit of a creative license to do something a little bit different. So the idea with the dark cider, it's a Fuji based blend, but we've infused it with hops. And so the hops gives it this really robust, full body, full body uh, bitterness to it, um, which isn't necessarily what commercial cider should taste like, but um, you know, it's different. And, and if you like hops and you like something different, then it could be for you. And the little one on the end. And this is the one that we will be featuring um, for October. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, it's called our vintage and it's made from um, apples that we're growing that are closer to traditional cider varieties. So, the apples in it are uh, Gravenstein, Cox's Orange Pippin, and Sturma Pippin. Um, and, and those apples create a more traditional cider flavour. Um, the really interesting thing with the vintage, uh, as we sort of move um, move along and change our focus less from just growing apples and making juice and more to making ciders is that we've planted um, another uh, half a dozen cider varieties that will end up in that vintage. So the 2012 vintage is the three varieties that I mentioned before. The 2015 vintage will be you know, completely different in its composition. So it's going to serve as almost a, um, you know, a history of, of how, we're, how we're changing the, the how we change the way we make that cider. Mm, sounds pretty exciting. So Tasmania has really um, kind of launched itself into the cider industry and I often now hear Tasmania being instead of the apple aisle, people are starting to call us the cider aisle. Yeah. And I think that's really exciting for Tasmania. Is there a way that all of the cider companies are working together to kind of produce something unique in yeah. Tasmania? Yeah, um, it's, it's still in its infancy, but 
we've um, we've now banded together and created an incorporated group called Cider Tasmania. Um, there's now I think 12 producers, and just about all of them have, have signed in for Cider Tasmania. So we're at that critical mass of producers where there's the, this momentum of, of building up, like you said, this, this cider aisle. And one of the initiatives that the, uh, the group are looking to do is to um, create a cider trail that will link in the producers um, all around Tasmania um, in some sort of perhaps interactive map or an application for a smartphone. Um, and people be able to navigate around from one to the other. Um, probably not going to be able to do it all in one day, but I think there's, an, there's certainly enough interest in cider, and there's, there's definitely interest in, in the Tasmanian produced ciders, uh, especially because what we're doing is, is quite unique, and I think all the producers are, are doing something a little bit different. So it's not like we're cookie cutters of each other. Um, all the producers have their own stories to tell, uh, their own styles and their own types of ciders and you know it's the, the ability to link in with each other to promote it as a group I think is, a, is going to be really beneficial to the industry. So I know that um, a significant event is coming up for Sprite and Cider. That's right. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a bit of a celebration. Yeah, Can we're, you tell um, us about it? Yeah, we're, we're hitting our, our one year anniversary towards the end of November. So one year from um, launching the product and also opening the cellar door. So on Friday the 29th of um, November we'll be having our, our first birthday um, here at the Cider. Um, it's not going to be an over the top affair but we'll have uh, a barbecue and we're going to have some, some live entertainment and we're hoping to get a really good crowd along uh, to help us celebrate that. Um, it'll also coincide with the conclusion of our T-File project which was the addition of an orchard walk, the planning of a small um, small demonstration orchard walk, and the establishment of, a, of an outdoor uh, area. So it's going to be a good time uh, to be here because there's quite a lot going on. Um, but obviously there will be cider consumed as well. Sounds very good. The cidery certainly is a lovely place to sit back and relax while enjoying a sprite and cider. Don't forget this month we're featuring the 2012 Vintage four of which come in the October hamper, along with a recipe for honey apple pork chops. For more details, visit the website.